Good afternoon, judges. We are team 2349616, introducing our report, investigating the Edge 1-2 conjecture from complete graphs to trees and unicyclic graphs. Before we begin, these are some of the notations that we will use. Denote G equals VE to be an edge-weighted graph, and WF of V to be the sum of edge weights incident to vertex V in the vertex set. The 1, 2, 3 conjecture claimed that when we allocated weights 1, 2, or 3 to all edges in any connected graphs other than K2, it is possible to make adjacent vertices have distinct sum of edge weights. This has been posed by Karonsky, Luzkak, and Thomason in 2004, and only proved by Kush this year. We will build upon his results in two directions. Firstly, we will strengthen the condition to only allow weights 1 and 2, hereafter referred to as the edge 1, 2 conjecture. We proved that the edge 1, 2 conjecture holds for most unicyclic graphs. Secondly, we will provide a near linear runtime algorithm for constructing a solution to the 1, 2, 3 conjecture. In our paper, we firstly proved the conjecture fails for complete graphs because there are two nodes whose incident edges are only weighted 1 and 2 respectively, and a contradiction arises since these two nodes have to be connected with an edge. Removing an edge, we propose that it is possible to construct an edge weighting such that the sum of incident edge weights are between n minus 1 and 2n minus 3 inclusive when n is odd, and between n and 2n minus 2 inclusive when n is even. When n equals 5, we will use the construction you see here. When n is greater than 5, we will use induction. When the number of nodes is even, consider the construction for n minus 1 and add the nth vertex, connecting all other vertices with weight 2 edges. When n is odd, we can do a similar procedure other than we connect all other vertices with weight 1 edges. Hence, the proposition is true. Solving n is 3 and n is 4 by construction, we have proved theorem 1 entirely. Before we move on to trees, we will consider the following two lemmas. Let's say there is an order of vertices being processed, such that when the vertex v is processed, we assign all the weights of unassigned edges incident to v. To prove lemma 2, Notice that we can increase the sum of weights of edges incident to V by X after assigning L edge weights, where X ranges from L to 2L inclusive, a total of L plus 1 choices. However, there are K adjacent vertices appearing before V, resulting in at most K forbidden values of sum of incident edge weights. Therefore, at least one such choice works. Now, we propose that the conjecture holds for any tree with at least three vertices. We root the tree arbitrarily and weight the edges in the tree based on the DFS order of vertices. When traversing through a vertex V, we want to weight all edges VW such that W is a child of V, while ensuring the sum of edge weights incident to V is different from that of its parent. Let D be the number of children of V. For the cases D is at least 1 and D is equal to 0, we can use lemmas 2 and 3 to show an assignment of edge weightings exists. Entering the crux of our paper, unicyclic graphs. Recall its definition, a connected graph with exactly one cycle. Starting with cycle graphs, denote the weight of the edge from i to i plus 1 as vi. Introducing a new notation, an, which just means that vertices i and i plus 2 are connected for all i, instead of i and i plus 1. We propose that the edge 1, 2 conjecture holds for cn if and only if n is 0 mod 4. The conjecture's condition means that the weight of an edge must be different from the edge two positions ahead. This is equivalent to saying an must be bipartite. When n is odd, clearly an is just a single odd cycle. When n is even, an consists of two cycles with equal length. Therefore, an is bipartite if and only if n is 0 mod 4, since the two cycles will each have even length. Indeed, when n is 0 mod 4, we can weight the edges like 1122, 1122, and so on. Here is an example with C8. Hence, we are done with cycle graphs. For remaining unicyclic graphs, we will use ideas from the tree's solution. Firstly, establish a vertex ordering. Then when it is vertex V's turn, assign edge weights for unassigned edges such that the sum of edge weights incident to V is different from that of W, where W appears earlier in the vertex order than vertex V. Let's look at lemma four. If all vertices in the cycle are processed first validly before other vertices, we can process the other vertices validly too. To prove this, we can imagine removing all vertices in the cycle. This leaves a forest. For each tree in the forest, choose the only vertex adjacent to a cycle vertex as root. Then, run the solution for trees. With the help of lemma 4, we will tackle all the remaining unicyclic graphs. We will denote the cycle vertices C1, C2, 
all the way up to CK, such that edge CI to CI plus 1 exists for all I. The first case, where at least one, degree, uh, one vertex has degree at least 4, we will process a vertex with degree at least 4 last. We can see that every cycle vertex fulfills the property that the number of unassigned edges is at most the number of unassigned edges. By lemma 2, we can assign them validly, and we can process the other vertices by lemma 4. The second case, where at least one vertex has degree equal to 3 and an even cycle length, we will process a vertex with degree equal to 3 last, aiming for WF of CI is congruent to I mod 2 for all cycle vertices. By doing so, for each vertex CI where I is smaller than K, we alter the edge CI to CI plus 1 to achieve the desired parity. For vertex CK, there is at least one edge that you can alter as well. As a result, the parity of WF of V of adjacent cycle vertices are different. We can process the other vertices by lemma 4. The third case, here all the vertices have degree 2 or 3. We choose C1 to be a vertex with degree 2 and CK to be a vertex with degree 3, aiming for WF of CI to be congruent to I mod 2 like before. For vertex C1, we will assign 2 to CKC1 and 1 to C1C2. For vertices C2, C3, all the way up to CK in order, we can alter an unassigned edge to achieve the desired parity. A problem arises since the parity of WF of C1 equals that of WF of CK. However, referring to the figure below, we can see that A plus B plus 2 is greater than 1 plus 2, so the cycle can still be validly processed. We can process the other vertices by lemma 4. Finally, the last case where the cycle length is odd and all vertices have degree 3. We'll simply refer to the diagram on the next page. We'll assign the cycle edges with weights 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, with C1 being connected to two weight 1 cycle edges. Then, for the extra edge incident to each CI, we assign them with weights 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and so on, such that C1 and C2 are adjacent vertices with an extra edge of weight 1. By doing so, we get the sum of incident edge weights 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, and so on. Putting everything together, we notice that propositions 6, 7, 8, and 9 cover all the cases where the graph in question is not a single cycle. By proposition 5, we have solved the cycle graphs too. Therefore, we have proved the theorem too. Lastly, we present a nearly near algorithm to the 1, 2, 3 conjectures construction for triangle union graphs. Transforming the problem, we let TV be a transformed weight of V. For each edge VW, we add 1 to TV or TW. Then for every triangle, we add 3 to each of the vertices in the triangle. If there exists a way to choose between adding 1 to TV or TW for each edge, such that TV is not equal to TW for all edges, then the 1 to 3 conjecture holds. To prove this, we can see that the choices associated with each triangle fall into one of the two cases. Each case corresponds to one way of assigning edges for the 1 to 3 conjecture. Therefore, we can find a construction to the 1 to 3 conjecture for triangle union graphs. Now, we propose that there exists a choice of adding 1 to TV or TW for each edge, such that the transformed weights of adjacent vertices are different. We firstly set the initial value of TV. Then, we perform the following n times. Among unchosen vertices, choose the vertex V with the smallest TV. Then, for each unassigned edge incident to V, add 1 to the transformed weight of the other vertex. This algorithm is correct because TV is smaller than TW for all newly assigned edges VW after processing V. For the time complexity, we will use a min heap to maintain the minimum TV efficiently, resulting in an OV plus E log V time algorithm. Our team came up with two potential extensions to our main results. Firstly, we found out a similar argument can be solved, used to solve the conjecture to almost all graphs with vertex disjoint cycles. The algorithm might fail if there are at least two cycles each with exactly one vertex with degree 3 and other vertices with degree 2. Secondly, we tried to come up with results using combinatorial nonstenosis, but they were unsuccessful. For example, we tried to prove edge 1, 2 conjecture on trees using combinatorial nonstenosis. However, consider the case of path of length 6. It can be shown that this do not have a vertex disjoint weighting if each edge is only allowed to take 0 or 1. However, if a combinatorial nonstenosis approach is possible, the graph must have a valid construction for any pairs of weights AB, where A and B are different. Therefore, a direct application of combinatorial nonstenosis to prove edge 1, 2 conjecture on trees will fail. We would also like to thank Arvin Leung and Chi Li for their assistance towards this project. This marks the end of our presentation.